Alrighty, it's that time again. Another new toy. <laughs> this, if I'm not mistaken, should be the CR10S. The new dual Z motor filament detection model that um, Creality makes. Gearbest sent me this. So their payment was this free printer in exchange for a review. So I get to make that review anything I want. Although I have no doubt I'm going to like it. I mean, it's a Creality. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a very safe printer to review. <laughs> so once again, I'm going to do the start stop of the video to make the interval correct. Another idea I had is um, I really love watching um, Joel Telling's um, Fan Mail Fridays. Do you guys think that would be a good idea to start something like that? Let me know in the comments. I think it would be kick-ass fun is what I think. And then maybe I can do, um, in the future, maybe I can do giveaways of some of my prints and stuff like that because uh, I have a lot of them. <laughs> and I'm going to have a lot more. So eventually this house will be full of 3D prints. And um, so I'm going to have to do something with them. So maybe I can, I don't know, maybe I can give them away to people. So we'll see. So first thing I'm going to do is open this bad boy up and lay it out on the table for you. So I'll be back in a moment. Once again, good packing. It was double boxed. This box was inside that box. I wonder who does that. I mean, this is probably this is the box Creality ships it in because it says right here CR10. I wonder if Gearbest is the one double boxing it. If they are, whoever's double boxing it, good move. It helps get the printers to their destination in one piece. As we've come to expect, very well packed, two layers. This is your bed, your gantry, and brain box and accessories. So I'll now pull all these out and will begin constructing this. Um, TiVo does a fantastic job of this. Creality does a fantastic job of this. And I just found out that Tronix Y now has a CR10 clone. And it's actually a little bigger, 330 by 330 by 420. So I'm um, really hoping that maybe I'll get one of those. And we'll have the, the three major companies that are currently making printers, all with a 30 by 30 by 40 class printer. And we'll see how they compare. Alrighty, here's everything out of the box, and I am very, very pleased with what I'm seeing. This, um, one of the reasons that there's such a loyal following of the CR10, besides just the fact that it's a damn good printer for a ridiculously cheap price, is that the manufacturer appears responsive to the community and the issues that the community finds. And the CR10S is a perfect example of exactly that. They added, um, of course, well, to the brain box here. The SD card slot is now shrouded, so there's filler around the SD card so that when you put the card in, it cannot fit between a gap and get lost inside the box. It's actually a common problem, or even break something. You get it in there wrong and it breaks. Well, now it's a filled hole, so let me show you that. You can see right here, there is plastic, so that there's only one opening, and that's the opening for the SD card slot. That is an improvement people have asked for, and we now have it. Um, Let's see, wasn't there one for filament? I guess that's this one right here. It looks like they've, this is not jerry-rigged. I believe this is for the filament detection sensor, or switch, and it is now integrated into the harness. Okay. Um, print bed. Look closely here. I do hope that Creality got permission to do this. They probably didn't, and the guy's probably okay with it, but I do hope they got permission. That is an injection molded tension brace for the Y-axis heat bed wiring. And it's virtually identical to the 3D printed one, except this one's injection molded. So they have integrated that design into their current model of the printer. Fantastic. I do hope that the guy who designed that is okay with it, because that is a much needed upgrade. They, and now it's part of it. You don't have to print it out. It comes with the printer already installed. Um, it comes with the new decorative blocks that covers the extrusions. It's that little touch that makes it look nicer, but these are now not 3D printed. These are injection molded. And they even say uh, Creality 3D on them. That's a nice touch. They pop in there like that, and now it looks pretty. I'll be removing all the blue. Um, another reason why this is something that's, that Creality does a little bit better than TiVo and ANET and stuff, they use the same Y bracket here 
to hold the um, Y axis stepper motor on, but this one's steel. This does not flex. That is strong. That is better than the aluminum. I mean, I have not had any problems with the aluminum one, but my fear is that over time, you know, 10,000 hours of printing two years from now, that that aluminum one will stress fracture. Maybe it won't, but I do like that these guys use steel. The glass bed has been improved. It is much thicker, and it's got nice, cleaned, blasted, rounded corners. So none of the glass is going to cut you up. Fantastic. That is another desired improvement, and it is nice and flat. It's thicker. It's a five millimeter piece of glass, it looks like. And that's what people have wanted. You've got it. Um, the gantry has been improved. This shroud box looks a lot nicer and cleaner. The mounts look cleaner, and the fan duct is the correct deviation, the deflection, and it's now ABS molded, not 3D printed. Your gantry captures, your Z-Rod captures, are now injection molded. They're not uh, 3D printed. In fact, I don't see a single 3D printed part anywhere on this entire printer. Everything is either metal or injection molded. Nothing. And the only non-metal part is this acrylic plate, as far as I can see. That acrylic plate is what is holding the standoffs here, just for your, basically the only thing this is here for is for the limit switch. So it is perfectly acceptable for that to be acrylic. It is completely non-load bearing, completely non-structural. It does not hold the stepper in. These standoffs screw into the stepper and they hold the stepper in. This is strictly a cap to give them a place to put the limit switch. That's perfect. The belt appears to be tensioned, although there is a rub there, which I never do like, but not much you can do about that. Well, they could. Oh, I mean, that's easily fixed. This just needs to be shifted over a little bit. There we go. Much better. No rubbing. Very, very nice. You got your dual Z upgrade. So now you have your twin Z motors. I personally think it's better with one Z motor because then you don't have to balance them. But people want a dual Z, you got dual Z. Now, the one thing I do like about having a dual Z is that I might be modifying this printer to take my Flexion direct drive extruder, which will allow me to do incredibly detailed flexibles and high temperature plastics. So that might be an upgrade coming for this. Also, it now has double steel plates on this side. The first CR10 only had one which would allow these wheels to flex a little bit. There is no flex here now. This is nice. Both steel. They had to add this in order to add the second um, copper coupler, or sleeve for the Z-Rod. These are now not 3D printed. They are blow molded. This of course is all blow molded. There isn't a single 3D printed part anywhere on this entire unit. Good job, Creality. Even though I don't have a problem with having 3D printed parts in my printer, for a company making a relatively high-end, low-budget printer, it's nice to see them making improvements. It's nice to see them listening to the feedback from the community, from the users, from the people who are using these printers, and making genuinely useful corrections and updates to make the printers better. That is fantastic. I love everything I'm seeing. They appear to have incorporated just about every single improvement that you need, except for the larger print knobs, which is not something they genuinely need to do. Because with this nice flat piece of glass, you're probably only going to adjust the bed level one time and never touch it again. But I will, of course, still print my ultimate knobs because I got big, goofy hands and I like those big knobs. Uh, that's it. I am going to begin unwrapping the Z rods are disconnected from the couplers they're not bolted in so that if they were to move in shipment they would not tear apart your couplers and they grease the hell out of them again they keep doing that um oh and, they got, and that one person who mentioned that they are right they do use a slightly smaller motor for the z versus the normal steppers um that's it it's fantastic I am very, very pleased with what I see. I, 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 I was wasn't sure how many of the upgrades I would see. I was not expecting to see the, the bed tension um, relief, the tension relief for the heat bed. That is great to see that. Um, anything else? Oh, these are all wrapped, zip tied, 
keeps them nice and neat during shipment. This was not wrapped or zip tied, which was interesting. Oh, they were using the foam to hold it in place. That that's what those two extra pieces of foam were in the packaging. There was a piece of foam in front of them behind the the um the Y carriage plate and heat bed so that it couldn't move during shipment. Fantastic. That's it. Next step will be building this bugger. I want to open up the accessories box and show you what's in there. Okay, the goodie box has been opened. You, of course, have your reasonably generous roll of filament. I like seeing like, not only are these spools useful, but um, it's a decent amount of plastic, so you can actually make a decent number of prints with the sample roll that comes with the printer. Your spool holder, which I'll be replacing with an ender holder on the top of the frame. Although I could just mount that to the top of the frame, too, if I wanted to. Another upgrade from the printer, you know they are adding the filament sensor. Well, now it is injection molded and professionally made. It's not 3D printed. The first few people who got the CR-10S got a 3D printed little square box module. It is now properly injection molded to perfectly fit on the printer. Very, very impressive. Actually, I think this fits. Yes, it does. You guys are going to get a kick out of this. It actually has a channel here so this will actually sit right on the frame if I'm reading this right yeah I think maybe am I doing that right in that way I thought it went on here somehow I'll have to look at the directions for where this goes but it looks like it's supposed to go in here I don't know Oh, there it goes. There we go. It sits right there like that. So that does that channel does lock in over the frame of the printer just like that. Very, very nice. Good snug fit. I like that. It's also open on top here so you can see the filament is properly passing through. It goes straight from here into the extruder feeder assembly. And that will also should do two things. One, it'll help straighten out the plastic before it gets to the extruder and going through your Bowden tube, but it'll also keep it from touching your Z-Rod. Some people worry about that, so that problem is now solved. And you simply plug it in. And you can even disassemble this. There's three little Allen key screws holding that together. Very nice. I am happy about that. I love it when I see them make iterative upgrades. See that? See TiVo? Not in future printers. Upgrade your current printers too. That's how you get loyal fans. If you want users to keep coming back to your brand, to like your printers, do that. Keep making them better. All of them, not just the new ones. This is a CR-10, and they improved it. At some point, they will stop selling the original CR-10, and this will be all they sell. This is the CR-10, so that's a good thing. Um, spare parts, you have a spare primary body nut to hold the gantry on. You have spare washers, spare hammer nuts, spare bolts, a couple of cap screw bolts. You also have a spare nozzle and spare coupling for the extruder and the Bowden tube. You of course have your USB cable, your guarantee card, your nippers. Well, actually it came with this, this is mine. It came with the blue ones, which I like. So you have your wrenches, your Allen keys, and it is the long ball end Allen keys, which I like. The two wrenches and the screwdriver, your zip ties and your nippers. I really like these blue nippers. They're just they're just better quality. They feel better. They look better. They cut better. They're a good tool. Your roll of tape, your putty knife, sharpened of course. Very nice. It's actually very sharpened. Nice job. Your spool holder, all injection molded, nothing 3D printed. And here is your braces and end stops and your primary nuts to hold the gantry in place. So everything is here, and of course your USB reader with memory card. This is a SanDisk 8 gigabyte SanDisk Edge card, whatever that means. But it does look like it's a legit SanDisk card. So, very cool. Let's see if this one lasts. So far I got two of these that are lasting. The green one and the blue one are lasting, so we'll see if this green one lasts. Uh, they did send me the European version, so it has this European plug on it, but as I told everybody else, it is simply a C13. So I simply come down here and grab one of my C13s and plug it in. No big deal. So if you ever see a printer you want and they have a US and a EU version and you can get the one that's not for your country cheaper, 
get the one that's not for your country cheaper and then just replace the cable because the brain box has a switch on it you pick 220 or 110 it doesn't matter so because it comes with the wrong cable it doesn't matter that's why I tell you to buy the European Ender even if you're in the US because even though it come with an EU plug the $20 price difference is a greater savings than the $3 cable you'll have to replace it you probably have a dozen of them lying around your house anyway so don't worry about the cable being wrong um, this was a uh, a review unit that GearBest sent me without direct payment so obviously they sent what they had and they, they sent me the EU one no big deal the things I forgot is they also give you an extra Bowden tube and they give you the tape if you wish to use that which I won't be using and um, one thing I really hope I hope Creality watches this uh, I know TiVo watched my TiVo video so I'm hoping Creality watches my Creality video get rid of this come on you're making a mint some of these printers I know you are I've sold like seven of them for you myself <laughs> okay I know you're making money selling these printers you're making incredible incredible upgrades that when I say incredible I'm talking about for a Chinese manufacturer to listen to the community and make iterative upgrades to their model is incredible we would expect that from a US company to get it from you guys is very cool I love it if you have to watch my TiVo tornado video or go buy a TiVo tornado and then look at their manual you guys need to duplicate that manual you need to make a Creality version of that nice book manual it is fantastic do that no more of this sheets of paper stuff with partially translated English do it right step by step pictures drawings don't do no none of this spend the time get the nice CAD drawing so it looks nice and professional not these semi blurry cropped in pictures do it right it's it is an amazing difference when you're trying to sell this stuff at retail to people to have that kind of stuff people like that they enjoy it it makes it easier to put together have tips and tricks in the manual so watch my video all the things that you see me giving advice for on how to do on a printer include that in your manual you don't need my permission you don't have to give me credit just do it people will love that it'll make your printers more reliable you'll you'll increase the probability of people getting good results from their printers and you will have happier customers you'll be able to attract more than just the hobbyist with a good quality instruction manual with good drawings not pictures drawings and correct proper English instructions I will do it for free if you want me to make English instructions for you I will do that if you're going to actually use it I don't want to do it if you're not going to use it because it's going to take me a long time to do it okay but I like your stuff I want to see it succeed although I don't think you need me to see it succeed you're doing fine but make good quality instructions take a line out of TiVo Tornado's book and also put an AC heat bed on this thing that works so well it's crazy just put an AC heat bed on this stage I believe they do this on purpose because it should reduce damage but it might just be from being routed around the this won't work all right it's too loose so we need to correct that just take it flip it over right on its belly and here is your gantry your your bed so you have your six V wheels engaging this V slot extrusion here these three over here actually they're all on the same side now so it looks like that's a change they are making are adjustable so you can turn these and make them tighter until these wheels properly engage the slots see so it's getting tighter there we go not quite almost there let's tighten up this one You just put the wrench in there. There you go. See? Now it's engaged nice and tight from either side. That was this one. That was loose. Same thing. Turn it. You'll feel it tighten. There we go. That one might be a little too tight. Let's back off a of hair. There we go. That feels good. That one's still a little too loose. There we go. That one's too tight now. So that means I made that one too tight. You gotta balance it because there are some um, six of them. There we go. Now all six wheels are going. 
and I can grab the wheel and move the entire bed. That one needs to be a hair tighter. There we go. There you go. Tightened up. So just take your wrench, the bigger end. It can engage these nuts. And now there is no wobble in play in the bed. Now you have to check both directions. So rotate this way, no play, absolutely stiff, and also this way, absolutely stiff, bed rolls nice and smooth, doesn't appear to put up a fight, no resistance, no flat spots, you're good to go, check your belt, should have a little bit of a twang to it, that looks fine to me, maybe, maybe tighten that up a little bit, it might need it, we'll see, but I think it's okay. Yeah, I think that's okay. Um, if you need to adjust that, loosen these, pull this out, tighten one of them back up, tighten the rest of them back up, you're good to go. Um, also at this point, check all your nuts. So I'm going to pause you in a moment, but take your largest wrench, go around and make sure all these are tight. Very good. These do feel tight. Very good. Oh, wow. Good job, Creality. Not one loose yet. That's a nice improvement. Ooh, that's really tight. I'm liking it. See, this is something you can learn, TiVo. Make sure all your bolts are tight. You don't want to have to make the user check your work to make sure the bolts are tight. Oh, nice. Since you can't tell what I'm doing, except when I tell you, I'm checking all the bolts to make sure they're tight and not one of them has needed to be tightened yet. These could use a tiny snug. No, that's actually just a wrench. Yeah, that's a, a malformed wrench. These are fine. Yep, they're fine. Let's check the grub screws. Good. Good. Grub screws are tight. Alrighty. Only a couple left. Might as well let you guys see it. Is it this one? Yep. You okay, know that's just your pass through, so that's what tight as it's supposed to be. Good. Fantastic. The belt is already properly tensioned. The bed was loose for shipment. Every single screw was correctly tightened bed is already fully compressed almost completely there's very little left to compress the bed um, so I won't have to do that for my first bed level it's already set fantastic um, if like me you want to remove these just grab them from the ends you know take a wrench to get in there or pliers and stick it in there and then just slide them out they come right out okay. I'm going to pause while I move on to the next step Alrighty, I've gone through and tightened up every single nut on the entire machine and I only found two places where I needed to tighten up anything. The primary bolts holding the top of the gantry on were not tightened to what I would consider proper. They were tight, but I was able to tighten them a little more, very little, and this one screw right here was a little tiny bit loose. This one capture nut for the mount for the Z-axis stepper. That's it. Every other screw on here was as tight as you could make them. Good job. I like seeing that. Tightened up the grub screws. They were intentionally left loose and then wrapped so that the grub screws wouldn't get lost so that this would not get damaged if this was tweaked in shipment. So of course you have to tighten those up and it does come with an instruction sheet telling you that you need to do that. So you know that was intentional. Otherwise, I didn't have to tighten a thing. This isn't loose. Fantastic. I don't even need to adjust the um, the head, the head's perfectly tight, it's fine. I do believe I will need to adjust this, possibly. No, that's good. Oh yeah, that's tight. Okay. This one feels a little loose though. Although I think that's supposed to sit like that. Yeah, I think the way they have this rigged up, you can't change that. But um, yeah, this is nice and tight. No issues, no complaints. I'm happy. Now I'm going to install this onto this.
Next step, you need your four primary bolts to attach the gantry to the printer. I personally prefer just tilting it. So what I do is I stick a bolt in, and I find the hole, and I line it up, and I turn it into the hole. There you go. Just spin it in. No big deal. And do the same thing with the second one. Don't tighten it all the way. You just want to get it in there. Just hand tight. Then go around to the other side. Be gentle with it because it is loose now. Now you can tip it all the way over without fear. Move it until you see the hole. Stick your screw in. Keep it a little loose. Wiggle it around a little bit if you need to until you feel the threads grab. If you can't turn it in by hand, something's not aligned right. Or you didn't clean out the threads. Make sure the threads are clean, but I saw nothing, no dirt in the threads on this one. You should be able to spin them all the way in until you can't grab them anymore by hand. Just use your fingers to wiggle the gantry if it gives you any binding. Once you have that done, take your largest wrench and just snug it. Do not tighten it. So, just snug. Just snug. As soon as it stops, let go. Don't try to tighten it all the way. Because if you tighten it all the way and it's slightly crooked, you'll have binding. And you'll also possibly twist your frame and prevent yourself from getting good quality prints. Which you don't want to do. It's unlikely, but it's good practice. Snug. And snug. I did not use the washers. I prefer the direct aluminum aluminum connection. Now that they're all snug, now you can crank them down. So you use the other end, snug that bugger down nice and tight. The difference between snug and tight is usually about half a turn. about half a turn. That's it. Now, we've snugged these down nice and tight. Don't forget, just in case there was any binding, check your other side. Make sure it didn't loosen up. Nope, still tight. That's it. The primary structure of the printer is built. Take your Bowden tube, pop it into place, run the quarter on the back. This just slides right in. You'll hear it click. You're good. Nice, free, no binding. I do still wish they would clip this. Now that they have, here at Creality, here's some advice for you. Now that you have this filament sensor here, put a screw in here to hold it tight so it doesn't pop off. Okay? And then also, put a little extension off of here, a little clip to grab this and hold it. Or, or add something here to grab this and hold it. It would just be a nice to have. Not a big deal, just a nice to have. Primary printer is built. At this stage, we begin connecting all the wires. The two heater cartridge wires are proprietary plugs, meaning they're distinct from each other. You can't put them in wrong. Don't force them. They'll go right in, screw in place. Already checked, QC is good. These are tight. Everything on here is tight, nothing is loose, nothing appears to be out of the mist. They're, they're actually improving the printer, not getting sloppy, and that's a good thing. So I am now going to wire all this up, and I will be back. Now all these wires are marked, so this one here says Y and Y. The three pin is your limit switch, the six pin is your extruder, so they would simply plug in. Now you'll notice you want to make sure these are under your bed wire because your bed wire is going to move back and forth so you don't want it catching on these wires and in fact it wouldn't be a bad idea to use a little bit of that blue channel to pin this into one of these channels but you can just push it into the channel as well and you tend to stay put and then wrap it with a piece of zip tie so for example if you can't see that duh, I take this and I push it into the channel here like that then you just take one of these zip ties and wrap it. This will keep this wire from getting unruly 
and getting in the way of the other wires. This will also give you a hard point, like I think of it as a tension relief, oddly enough. Why do you want tension relief for this? So if this gets tugged, you don't want it tugging this. Okay? You, um, it'd be better to use the blue stuff on top of this to act as a pinch. Okay? You don't have to, but now this can only pull so far, so it's not going to yank on these connections, which is what you want to make sure it does not happen. There we go. That's it. Just cut a little piece of the blue stuff and use that as a compression to pinch the wire in there. Next up is our X, and I guess this is Z. Oh yeah, the two Z motors, duh. So send this one underneath, and that's gonna go over there. Again, your six pin is your extruder, and your three pin is your limit switch. Where is that at? Oh, the limit switch is not installed yet. I gotta put the braces on, duh. This one here goes over to this stepper. There we go. Now I always make sure to do these two last because these have to lift up with the gantry and you don't want them snagging on any of the other connections. So you want them last so they're on top so that when they lift up, they're not trying to lift up any other wires with them. So this is our filament detection. And this, come on, Creality, still too short. Give me another 12 inches on this wire, please. Not a huge deal, but it'd be nice to have another few inches on there. there your limit switch goes in here like this there we go if you have trouble reaching it just once you get in the hole just take a wrench to help you push it in that's all and then this is our extruder I do like the way they turned it it's faced nicely keeps the wires all nice and neat now something I like to do is I will take this group of three here which I might as well make four, and I will pin them all to one of these standoffs right here. I'll show you this in a moment. Give me a second. Nice and tight. There we go. What I've done is I've pinned this wire grouping so that there's still a little slack here, see nothing's tight, to one of these standoffs. And the idea is that now, if this gets pulled on, see, I'm pulling on this, and it's not yanking any of these wires out of their connections, which you want to make sure it does not happen. Now I'm going to put the T-bracket and limit switch on this side. Once again, these are called hammer nuts. If you see that, it is a oddball shaped nut there. These are called drop-in hammer nuts. The way this works is that when this is turned the correct direction, it will fit into the extrusion, but when you tighten it, the hammer nut rotates, locking into the extrusion. So you have to loosen all of these nuts. The bottom, the top two need to be vertical, the bottom two need to be horizontal, so that you can fit it onto here, and it will pop into the extrusion. Mine turned, yes it did. There we go. And then you have to tighten them up. And you gotta make sure that you might have to loosen them first so that they go in, and then when you tighten them, they'll grab and turn. You can look sideways in here and see whether the nut has turned or not. So I need to pay attention to this, so I'm gonna pause you for a minute and come back. Now another trick with these hammer nuts, if you have trouble with them, if they give you a hard time going in, you can um, tighten them and then align them that they're all straight. The two vertical ones are vertical, the two horizontal ones are horizontal, and now it just slips right in there like it was nothing. But of course, that won't work. Now that you have it in there, you have to loosen the nut 
and you'll actually see it back out in and then turn it and there you go now the nuts locked you can actually see it turn if, you, if it doesn't want to turn just take your wrench and poke it and make it turn again loosen this one see it turn when you go back the other way you're good to go same thing here there we go see it turn now once you get these all tightened you can't see the fourth one but if those other three are tightened this one will go just back it out until the screw starts to push out on you a little bit and then tighten it back up and you're good these are important because they take the load off of those primary bolts that hold it in if you break one of these it's no big deal to replace the bracket if you break one of those you got to replace the entire extrusion that's it you notice i haven't plugged this in yet so i want to make sure that's on top with the other ones so we've now made sure that the my wires going up at the gantry are on top they are not below any of the other wires same thing with this one it's on top not below nothing is in the way it just pops right in spins on and we are good to go um, for you plastic porn folks here we go now don't forget to check your voltage switch again as is proper the switch is already set to 220 it should always be set to 220 because if you plug a 220 device into a 120 outlet nothing happens if you plug a 110 device into a 220 outlet magic smoke happens so setting it to 220 by default is good practice you the user can then take your little screwdriver and switch it to 110 it'll actually say 110 there I'm guessing there is a cat on here I hope there's a cat on here I like my cats there we go now I'm going to power up warm up and begin the leveling process I will give you guys a real quick and dirty rundown on leveling when we get to that point I'll be putting print and Z on here so I'm not gonna bother putting that nice big tape down but I just slapped out a piece in the middle so that I can print the cat something to remember see how you can peel the tape the reason you can do that is because this side of the tape actually has a coating on it that makes it slightly non-stick, which you don't want for your printer. So make sure if you use tape or any print surface, because your oils are a non-stick material. So you take some alcohol, spray it, and you clean it. If you're doing glass, you need to clean it. If you're doing hairspray, you don't have to clean it because the hairspray takes care of that. And now, if you touch where you cleaned it, you notice it's a little rougher now. It's not quite as slick. You'll even feel the friction build up on the paper as you're cleaning it. That will stick a lot better now. All right, on first power up, one of the first things you check is to make sure your thermistors are working, and that's easy. Are you getting a temperature reading from both? If you are, it's working. If you want to test it, just grab the nozzle with your hand, and if you hold it there for a minute, see, it just went up to 24, because it's reading the temperature increase from me holding it, okay? You can do the same thing with the bed, but that takes quite a while longer because your heat has to get through the glass. Uh, first thing we're going to do is preheat. So let's see what's on the SD card. There is stuff on the SD card. Oh, there's something new on here. L-U-O-S-I-L-U-O-M-U dot G-code. Now that's interesting. Are there models? Y-axis wire protection, STL files access installed it and there is a cat we're gonna have to of course print the cat first but then we got to see what that other one is that's that makes me curious now I don't know what that is it's a mystery so go back to main pair and we're going to auto home X is working fine and stop good Y working fine Oop. And the Z is coming down. Right, one of the first things you gotta check is you gotta check to make sure your X gantry is level. And it is. Wow. 
I'm really surprised by that. It's level. You've got to make sure that both ends of the gantry are the same distance from the bed. You can just race to the top until you hit the end stops, wait until they both hit the end stops, then you know they're both at maximum, and then rehome it. So we will go to prepare. There's a bed auto leveling. Oh, interesting. Oh, so it does have a mode like the TiVo does. Looks about right. Looks like you have to do it each time. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but when I did that, I did both. I did both left and right together. Same number of turns. That reduces how much twisting you're going to get in the bed when you do this. Now remember, if you're pushing the bed around when you do it, just give it a little tap so you know it settles down to its proper spot and adjust it. I do it by eyeball. You can use a piece of paper. Take any any piece of paper, slide it underneath there, adjust it until there's just you can feel it just grabbing the paper, or just look at it. You do that enough, and you'll you'll get the eyeball for what it is. Looks like the fan shroud might be a little loose. Heard that little buzzing when it moved over. There we go. So if you do the bed auto leveling on the menu, it does the go to the four corners and allows you to adjust it. That is awesome. Here we go, just a little gap. Okay. Now it should go to the center. Perfect. Maybe a hair higher. No, I think we're good. Now I should rehome. Nope, it just lifted up. All right, now we're gonna load some filament. I guess for now I will use the spool holder it comes with. It comes with three of these little thumb screws. You do want to make sure if you use the stock spool holder that you have it tilted into the right because if you tilt it to the left, a full kilogram spool full will be enough to tip this thing over. And then you'll laugh and giggle at yourself like, why did I do that? Do it on video and I'll laugh and giggle at you too. <laughs> there we go. Our sample filament. Two things I like to do, get past all the kinks, cut this at like a 45 degree angle, that allow it to insert easier. Take your first section of filament and straighten it out a little bit, so it's flatter. It just, it just makes life easier. It makes life a whole lot easier to feed if you have that section of filament nice and straight. Now I always have it come over the top so that it's not that much of an angle coming down but it keeps it from getting too much of an angle when it gets up to the top here. So this feeds through here. I heard it click the switch. Then this feeds into here. Oh, looks like it's got a little light on it. Give it a squeeze, push the filament through. You'll see it enter the Bowden tube and you're good to go. All right, we are all the way in. Filament detection is in and plugged in. Let's heat it up. Print from SD card. CR10 English. Model. Cat. You have to have the cat. 
bed is heating up at 45 degrees. That's good. That's plenty. I'm going to pause you and come back when it starts printing. Alrighty, it has begun. And for some reason, it is sitting way too high. I wonder why it's doing that. Right, there you go, live adjust. Now it's good. I'm not entirely sure why it was sitting high. There we go. You got some of the black filament they use at the factory to test it. And they did put a skirt around it. Good boys. And now we're starting to get the white filament. Well, that's it. I'm going to come back after the cat's done and add a little tiny finish to the video. Cat is done. 2 hours, 17 minutes. I'm also going to swap out and put my Print Z on here. I just took it from one of my other CR10s and I'll get a new piece for this one. Hmm, you ever want to see the print from the underside? You see that? There we go. That. A um, good chance to show you a neat trick too. If you ever have, um, you know you're going to have trouble getting a print off, uh, take a little piece of tape and put it at the intersection where you know the print is going to be. So partially underneath the print and partially on the outside. And what you can do is you can then peel the tape up, spray some alcohol at the interface joint, and now you can get your peeler in there a little easier. See? And it comes right up. So that's a little trick to let you get underneath the print if you know you're going to have a hard time getting the print off. But anyway, here is our kitty cat. Not bad. Doesn't look quite as good as the CR-10 though. The original CR-10 cat. Might just be the filament. I never trust the G-code they include, so I'll do my own G-code. It's too much light, oddly enough. There we go. That's it. I will do my test prints and play around with it and beat the snot out of it and we'll see what happens. For now, it's time for some Decepticon purple and some test prints. You guys have a great night.